Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Odin's Movie Vlog. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope you're doing well. And today, we're going to be talking about a couple of different stories, but they have the same theme, and that theme is piss poor management. So, the first story we're going to be talking about is Solo, a Star Wars story. Now, this came out. Uh, this came out a few days ago. Actually, the, you know, obviously this article came out today, but this story about Solo being disqualified from the Oscars is something that didn't just come out today, but it is still <laughs> hilarious and also important to talk about because it tells us a lot. People might say this, look at the story and say, oh, look, Solo got disqualified. But the reason why it got disqualified from being nominated for an Oscar is even more important in my own personal opinion. So this is from CBR.com, and here it says, The Musical Branch of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences has officially disqualified four films from Best Score Consideration, Variety reports. One of the entrants removed from competition was a score composed by John Powell with themes by John Williams for the sto for Solo, A Star Wars Story. And of course, the reason why I skipped the beginning of that was because it basically talked about how it got, um, it's no longer going to be possibly nominated for original song or original score song doesn't really make any sense to me because it was pretty much all score so you know whatever i'm sure that maybe there was a song in there that i missed but you know i, I don't care and that's one of the, again one of the main reasons why i don't like original song because so many times what they'll do is these artists will put a song in the damn credits and oh see it's in the movie though so therefore let's nominate it and that's just stupid you, you want to know the most non-movie category at the oscars it's going to be best song, especially with the way best original song has happened in today's world. If it's a musical, that's one thing, but the fact that these artists can come in and get an Oscar and try and possibly get the tremendously important EGOT, you know, the very rare thing that only a few people have ever gotten because they wrote a song for a movie's credits is just stupid in my opinion. And obviously, I think that the whole thing needs to be revamped, but of course, I think the entire Oscar system needs to be revamped because it's just become a giant political mess. But the official reason, and this is the most important thing about this news today, the official reason for the qualification, or rather the disqualification from the board, was that the score had been entered too late to be eligible. The deadline was reportedly November 15th, which makes it even more surprising that Disney didn't manage to submit the score in time. Oh, really? CBR.com. It's surprising? This isn't surprising to me at all. This just goes to show you once again why and how Disney Star Wars is being poorly run. Now, of course, maybe people will say, oh, this is a small thing. This is just to get an award. Maybe they didn't care. Well, the fact is, is that they obviously care enough because they did enter in. They entered in too late, though. So for you to say, oh, it doesn't matter... Well, obviously, they think it matters. Obviously, Lucasfilm thought it was important enough, or Disney thought it was important enough to, you know, try and put it out there to try and get best original score, even though, obviously, it uses a lot of tones from, from Williams, so I think it should be disqualified just on that alone. But the fact that the only reason why this score was disqualified from being considered, even just considered for an Oscar nomination, is because of incompetence, is because of something being poorly run. And this is something that we've been talking about for a very long time. We know that Lucasfilm is being poorly run by Kathleen Kennedy. We know that she, oh yeah, she's getting an Oscar this year, so you can't say that. Oh my gosh, she has so many films in her name. I have never denied that she might possibly have just an inkling of talent when it comes to actual production of a film. But when it comes to production of Star Wars films, let alone heading an entire division of Disney, head being the head of Lucasfilm, she has been awful at it. And if you want proof of that, look to what The Last Jedi did. Guess who greenlit that? Guess who allowed that to happen? Kathleen Kennedy. Look at how much money Solo lost. $200 million. You want to know how that happened? Oh, that's right, because Kathleen Kennedy fired the directors, hired someone else, and made them reshoot 85% of the entire movie. So... Let's talk about incompetence this episode because it really is purely about Disney, Lucasfilm, incompetence, especially when it comes to Star Wars. It's amazing to me that they show this level of incompetence in this one division, and yet in all the other areas, they seem to be pretty well run. I mean, you look at Disney Pixar. Disney Pixar has done very well. There really haven't been any misses when it comes to Disney Pixar. When you look to Marvel content. Marvel has done very well. Now, obviously, I'm worried about Captain Marvel, but overall, Marvel has been run very well. 20 films in 10 years. Every single one of them has made money. You look to the most recent one, made over $2 billion. And Endgame is going to make probably even more than that because it's being very well run. And you look to the showrunners there. You look to Kevin Feige, who's in charge of it, and he obviously is a competent person who knows how to weave stories together and knows how to have a vision for the future. Kathleen Kennedy just does not have it. She might be okay on one movie that's stuck in one time and is not a part of a bigger universe. She very well might be good at that. But when it comes to 
being the creator or rather being the center of the Star Wars universe and being able to craft stories and be able to delegate these stories to certain people, she obviously has no idea what she's doing. And if you want proof of that, look to Solo's box office, look to the reaction from The Last Jedi, and also look to this, the very fact that it's being so poorly run that they couldn't even submit something on time. That is the level of incompetence that Lucasfilm has. Also talking about incompetence, since we are in Oscar season, or almost in Oscar season, isn't it exciting? Not really, it used to be, but you know, nowadays it's like, oh great, what political story are they going to be nominating this year? What movie is going to win Best Picture that no one's going to see, or most people haven't seen, or never will see? Is it going to be another Moonlight? Is it going to be another uh, Girl Screws a Fish? Like, who knows what it's going to be this year? And honestly, at this point, I almost don't even care, but... Still talking about the Kevin Hart situation because it is still pretty big news that people are still not letting this go. Because Kevin Hart is moving on, because Kevin Hart is still having shows, these people would love for Kevin Hart to say, I'm giving up comedy and I'm going to get help. And then people would say, oh, bravo. Oh, that's a brave man. No. No, that would not be a brave man. That would be someone who is an idiot. And luckily, Kevin Hart is not an idiot. He's continuing with his shows. He's continuing to say comedy. And guess what? People still love him because guess what? He's funny. He's funny. Oh, you, you're saying that because he's a man. No, it's because he's funny. Just because you're, you know, your liberal SJW comics bomb because they're not funny. It's not because they're women. It's because they're just not funny. <laughs> you know, just because you're upset about that. You know, your Netflix special woman who doesn't, who didn't say a single joke, and yet it's a comic special. It's a stand-up special, and yet the whole time she's preaching people about identity politics. Yeah. That's what you would love. You would love for that to host the Oscars, wouldn't you? But guess what? No one would watch it because it's stupid. Yeah, that's right. It's stupid. Sorry, facts don't care about your feelings. My, ben, my friend Ben Shapiro said that once, and guess what? I love it. I think it's absolutely fantastic. I wish he was my friend. Ben Shapiro, please be my friend. Anyway, he's smart. Um, <laughs> Academy is looking warily at Oscar host options. In fact, they're even putting it out there that they may even not go with an Oscar host because of all of the backlash that they've had, not just from choosing him, but also from him leaving. And a lot of that has to do with the way that the Oscars and the way that the media and the way that the Hollywood elites have responded to Kevin Hart. That is the reason why they're in this toxic situation because they might pick somebody who is too far left, so far left that guess what? Their numbers are going to absolutely fail. They might pick someone too safe, too safe in their opinion, who will not draw people in. Kevin Hart was going to be their best shot. We can be their best option. Guess what? If you still had Kevin Hart, if the Oscars had come out and defended Kevin Hart, if Hollywood hadn't done, gone crazy, guess what? The Oscars might have actually had a chance of bringing in not only a new audience, but also more eyes. Because you would have had someone who's genuinely hilarious on stage instead of people who are kind of hilarious in certain situations, but are also just political pawns. You know, you look to the... I don't even remember his name at this point because he was so freaking bad. Jimmy Kimmel, you know, just, you know, he was just walking that line. And, oh, yeah, Trump, 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 Trump. It's like, shut up. We're not watching you to be preached to. We're watching you because we want to escape for just a little while. But anyway, they might not go with a host, which could be good. But also, let's just be honest here. The Oscars are going to bomb in the ratings this year because of this. Like, unless they choose someone else that I'm not thinking of who's an awesome, perfect choice, which no one else really comes to mind at this point, especially anyone at least who would want the job because it's one of the jobs that most people do not ever want to have because of crap like this, because it takes just one person to look in your tweet history and say, oh, look, see, back when he was 14 years old, he used the word gay in a derogatory fashion. Get over yourselves, people, and grow the hell up. But it doesn't even stop there because our good friends over at Vox, that's right, Vox, the best site ever, is taking it even a step further, saying Kevin Hart's Oscars controversy feeds the stereotype of the black homophobe. So, now we've gotten, this is where identity politics goes. It's not just enough saying, oh, he said something homo homophobic at one point in time. But now it's, oh, this is bad because it creates a stereotype of a black person being a homophobe. This is identity politics to a T. This is intersectionality to a T. It's not just about being one race. It's if you're a race and also a certain orientation, guess what? You've checked off two boxes there, which means your victimhood is that much higher. It's not enough to be black anymore. It's not enough to even just be gay anymore. You have to fit so many boxes in order to fit this victimhood chart that these SJW, NPC, crazy people, that's right, I almost said liberal, because guess what most of them are? And not all liberals are bad. I know a lot of really great liberals out there. And I hate to always throw them in with this same group of people. But at the end of the day, you can't deny the reality of the situation. <sighs> but anyway, this is what I want to talk about. Because this is just pure incompetence right here. What it's like to be black and gay watching the Kevin Hart controversy unfold. Who cares? Who cares? 
It's it's really it's it's people who are overblowing something that is unimportant. Oh, you're just saying that because you're a white, straight, cisgender male. No, I'm saying it because I'm a person living in the real world and I'm not hiding behind a freaking safe space in a freaking college dorm learning gender studies where I'm going to waste my money, waste the government's money, waste my parents' money to get a job that does not matter, to get a job that I'm going to complain about saying, well, I should be getting paid more because I'm not getting paid more because of blah, blah, blah. No, you're getting not paid more. You're not getting paid more because you're an idiot because you're the one that decided. You're the one that decided saying, oh, you know what I want to do? I want to perpetuate the downfall of all of the human race with this stupid NPC identity politics, thousand and ten million gender nonsense. Once again, facts don't care about your feelings. You can take your feelings and you can shove it where the sun don't shine. And guys, I would love to know your thoughts about this whole Kevin Hart situation. The fact that, like, someone's taking even a step further saying, oh, it's not about him. It's not about gays. It's about the black gay identity and the homophobic black uh, stereotype. That's what it's really about. Or the fact that the Academy might not even have a host at this point because it put itself in its own situation because Hollywood hates itself and it's eating itself. It's almost hilarious to see it happen. Or also about the... Pure incompetence of Disney Lucasfilm here not being eligible because they submitted something late. I would love to hear your thoughts about any of this stuff down in the comments below. If you like this video, smash that like button because you know that YouTube is going to demonetize it because they hate people who speak the truth. But that is where I am. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. And as always, God bless.